All right, um, my name is uh, Chi Chen Chen. <clears throat> I'm a faculty member in the Department of Mechanical and Electromechanical Engineering, National Sanjian University in Taiwan. <clears throat> so uh, the topic of today's presentation is a pedestrian counting scheme for video images. <clears throat> so the contents of today's talk um, mostly come from the master's thesis of the second author, Mr. Yifan Wu, uh, actually came from China and uh, he got his master's degree in Taiwan. And right now I believe he is working in China now. <clears throat> Uh, I would like to follow this uh, sequence to give today's talk. First of all, uh, some back background information will be provided. And then I would like to talk about the methods which include the extraction of moving targets. Um, of course, and the foreground extraction and the object detection will be um, included. And then followed by pedestrian tracking and counting. And then uh, we conducted some experiments to verify uh, the proposed algorithm. And finally, I would like to draw some conclusion to wrap up today's talk. <clears throat> um, the definition of pedestrian counting is actually to calculate the numbers of people entering and leaving a given region. And uh, of course, and uh, this kind of uh, technique has been very useful for market, marketing analysis and the, and the security purposes. And uh, you can find related technologies almost everywhere. For example, theaters, markets, malls, department store, exhibition halls, transportation stations, uh, government building, and uh, many other places. <clears throat> and of course, you can use uh, some other devices to achieve pedestrian counting. Uh, for example, you can use infrared or laser technologies. But um, machine vision has some um, many advantages over those devices, such as uh, the camera can give you a broad spatial coverage. And most of the time, machine vision can provide a more accurate result. And most importantly, um, the machine vision usually is quite cheap compared to other devices. Uh, besides, machine vision has the ability to provide much more information about pedestrians by extracting features of people. For example, uh, the facial recognition can give you more information about the pedestrian uh, to know uh, who he or she is and uh, to decide whether he or she can be allowed into this specific area. <clears throat> Okay, let's talk about the methods for pedestrian identification. Uh, actually, there are four approaches to achieve this uh, goal. The first one is the human body model approach. Okay, so uh, for this approach, um, I usually uh, use geometric features of human body, such as head, trunk, hair, shoulders, and etc. And the template matching approach using is used uh, given templates. But uh, the given, the templates uh, cannot be always de described by fixed and the simple mathematical rules. So, so therefore we have the third approach, the outline classification approach. So, this approach also use template, but the templates uh, has to go through a lot of training process. So uh, with a lot of image samples. In the last one, the moment, the movement feature approach uh, applies 
uh, characteristics of periodic movement of humans. And about people counting, so there are major direct, two major directions. The first one is consider a person as a single moving object, all right? So if the size of moving region is similar to that of a pedestrian, and the region will be counted as a person. But however, if the size is, a, is larger than the width of a, the size of a single person, and the moving region uh, needs to be decomposed into several areas, all right? So this method uh, highly rely on prior knowledge. Um, so the char characteristics of this uh, approach uh, usually gives the result of low accuracy but uh, they have the advantage of fast computation. And another approach for people counting is uh, based on image features and the machine learning technologies. So usually uh, people counting uh, is achieved by template matching through learning process with a lot of image samples. And this approach has the advantage of much better performance in terms of accuracy. But also at the same time, the drawback is um, this approach is usually uh, expensively computational um, cost. And uh, it uh, usually requires a larger amount of image samples. So the motivation of objective of this research is that we, we would like to develop an effective and portable framework, which means uh, uh, the, the whole device is uh, easy to carry and uh, the cost is very uh, effective for pedestrian identification and the bi-directional counting for potential future applications. And the people counting uh, in this paper uh, consists of a couple of stages. The first one is foreground extraction, then followed by object detection, and finally, uh, pedestrian tracking and counting. Um, of course, at the very beginning, you need to find which part uh, in the image uh, is, uh, has the potential to be moving target. <clears throat> um, unfortunately, the image quality is usually affected by uh, weather enumeration, uh, electromagnetic interference, and other possible noises. And so uh, the image of, at the very beginning need to be uh, filtered through some filtering process to get rid of um, uh, unnecessary noises. So the medium filter was selected for this purpose uh, because of its outstanding performance of noise removal and uh, age reservation. And then the foreground extraction. <clears throat> foreground extraction is to isolate the region with pedestrian for the purpose of improving computational efficiency by narrowing search area. So uh, there are already a number of popular methods to do that. Um, but usually uh, three stages are involved for foreground extraction. They are establishment of background model, identification of background model and update of background model. So it has been proved that the mixture of Gaussian background model is more reliable than single Gaussian model. So uh, we choose uh, this model for foreground extraction. The mixture of Gaussian model actually use more than one Gaussian distribution 
with weighting factor. So the simply the idea behind this is if the pixel of a new coming video sequence agree with the model, and they will be classified classify as a background, otherwise foreground. Okay, quite simple. Uh, however, um, the computation speed is quite slow. So later on, an online expectation max maximization algorithm was introduced to improve the computation speed <coughs> and to adapt to a variant environment. So, however, uh, this uh, EM method uh, has some drawback. So we developed a modified online EM algorithm to overcome those difficulties. So in order to verify this performance, we used um, the video images from two data sets. Uh, one is from the intelligent room video in SBM net data set, and the other is from the PETS, PETS uh, 2009 data set, okay? Then followed by uh, from foreground extraction, then we need to detect pedestrians. So uh, we need to identify pedestrian from the foreground for tracking and the counting purposes. So there are, are some feature detection methods for uh, pedestrian identifications um, such as HAR-like uh, technique, AOBP, HOG, and et cetera. Uh, compare, uh, comparing those methods, uh, we choose the HOG approach uh, because it, it's uh, computational efficiency and uh, detection performance. So the object detections uh, is uh, achieved by uh, HOG, uh, feature extraction followed by SVM, support vector machine classified. So the moving origin may consist of uh, two parts, pedestrian and the non-pedestrian. <clears throat> so HOZ uh, method actually locates features of local region in an image. So basically uh, this method calculate the gradient um, I try to use the gradient to locate the features of an image. Um, followed by HOG, supported vector machine uh, was used to determine the best hyperspace as the decision function for classification because we are we only have two classes. So one is uh, pedestrian, the other is non-pedestrian. So actually we separate all the data points into two groups. So like the figure uh, you can see on these slides. So uh, we use um, about, in order to train um, to for uh, classification. So we need to apply pedestrian samples. Pedestrian samples come from INRIA pedestrian data set. Um, in this data set, uh, uh, they have a positive pedestrian images and the negative pedestrian images. Um, <clears throat> the positive pedestrian images are uh, with all pedestrian positive pedestrian images with the same resolution of 64 times 128. But however, uh, the negative uh, pedestrian images are with different sizes. <clears throat> so we, um, so in order to get the same size, uh, of negative images, 
uh, to cope with the positive images. So <clears throat> we collect um, more than 12,000 negative images in total uh, by randomly crop uh, those um, negative images from each sample. And so finally, we got uh, uh, 1,500 positive samples and 12,000 negative samples. So those samples uh, were used to for the training pro process. <clears throat> and about the pedestrian checking and the counting. So we apply common filtering and the block binary large object analysis. So the common filtering has been a effective computational approach uh, for tracking a moving objects. So actually, um, uh, common filtering is a systematic recursive algorithm according to two equations. Okay, one is a state space dynamic equation and the other is an observation model. Um, but most importantly, and both model uh, include uh, possible process noises and the measurement of noises. So this figure shows you uh, the structure of uh, the, those two stages in common filtering, prediction stage and the update stages. And blob analysis <clears throat> is used to extract the features from connected pixel in a binary image. So for example, the spatial moments like the equation shown in the slides can give you a lot of information. So if both P and Q are zero and it gives you the area or the size or, or M10 over M00 and uh, M01 over M00 gives you the geometric center or centroid of uh, <clears throat> uh, connected pixel in the image. So the blob analysis is uh, quite simple, but it's quite effective for rigid objects and the limited number of moving objects. So uh, since the common filtering techniques is able to predict the future position of the moving object. So the blob matching algorithm is only applied to the nearby of the estimated location so that the computational efficiency can be greatly improved. About pedestrian counting. So counting is to uh, calculate the name number of pedestrian crossing a given screen line. However, it would be quite complicated to judge the traveling direction uh, if more than one pedestrian are involved. So we expand the screen line uh, to a screen zone. And the width of the screen zone is set to a little bit wider than the width of regular people. So how do we determine the, the moving direction? So here I would like to give you an example. Uh, when the pedestrian passed the left borderline, the object pixel on the borderline is accumulate. After the pedestrian uh, fully passed the left borderline, and the sum will be unchanged. So there are two possible conditions. So if the moving region finally is located at the left-hand side of the left borderline, and the direction uh, should be from right to left. However, if the moving region uh, is finally is within the screen zone, then the moving direction should be from left to right. So then after we develop all the methods and then we conduct a, a couple of experiments. So two pre-recorded test videos and the two live videos taken in the campus uh, were involved. <clears throat> um, test video number one, in test video number one, uh, there, uh, there are, there is a steady and a little pedestrian flow without 
significant overlapping. But for test video number two, um, the pedestrian flow is higher and there uh, a lot of overlap uh, phenomenon can be found. <clears throat> for live video, um, uh, was taken by a Pentax digital camera and uh, the camera was attached on a tripod standing on the table so that it can uh, a broader view. And the height of the camera above the ground was about 3.5 meter. And its depression angle below the horizontal level was 15 degrees. So the software environment include the Visual Studio uh, program using C++ programming language with OpenCV computer vision library. And in order to decode the video, XVD coded uh, was used. So these are two sample images in test video. And those um, two magenta lines uh, are the screen line. And the green, uh, the region enclosed by green lines uh, were, were defined by the user. So these are two simple images uh, in live videos. Uh, in order to evaluate the performance, the, we define the ac accuracy as the equation where N1 and N2 are actually the detect detected number of pedestrian. So uh, this table gives you the result for the test video. And as you can see, for test the video number two, uh, because of, of their was uh, uh, some overlapped uh, phenomenon among pedestrians. So the accuracy uh, reduced to 82%. <clears throat> For the live video, because the uh, people flow is not so high, so the accuracy uh, is or so good. <clears throat> And as you can see, the average processing time uh, for live video uh, is uh, higher than the computer processing time for test video. Uh, the, the reason is that uh, the resolution for live videos uh, is higher than the resolution in test videos. Okay, so it's about time to draw the conclusions. So this paper presents a promising pedestrian counting scheme, uh, which consists of foreground extraction, pedestrian identification, pedestrian tracking and counting. And foreground extraction is achieved by improved mix, mixed uh, Gaussian model. Then we combine HOG feature detection with the SVM classification to deal with pedestrian identification. And the common filtering with Rob analysis uh, was employed to conduct pedestrian tracking. And the experiment with uh, data set videos and the live videos uh, demonstrated encouraging performance in, ter in terms of accuracy and the two week counting possibility. Uh, However, further examination on occlusion analysis and comparison with existing algorithm are required in the future work. All right, that will conclude my today's talk. Thank you very much for your listening.